having managed over a billion dollars in revenue for some of the biggest media companies in the world, Michelle Thornton G currently serves as the Executive Vice President of Business Development for Endeavor Global Marketing and a former Senior Vice President for BET, Black Entertainment Television. G is a creative. She was instrumental in the rebranding of Centric as, quote, the first network designed for black women, and then again into BET, her. She's a fashion and sports pioneer her entire bio is in your program, but what is particularly important to me is that our speaker today was chosen by our students. They saw Ms. G, Dr. G speak at a function in Austin and were thoroughly impressed and said, we need her as our commencement speaker. So graduates, today we have Michelle Thornton G. She has worked for CNN, A&E, the History Channel, and the Weather Channel. She began her career at SBC Communications in Oakland, California. <laughs> Over a 20-year career, she has honed her skills in the following areas of leadership, culture, strategy, revenue generation, and relationship building. The author of not one, but two books, branding a term that I love, Stratichick. After losing her dad to cancer in 1997, Dr. G decided to go back to school and received her Bachelor's of Arts from Golden Gate University at the age of 30. In May of 2017, she was honored with an honorary doctorate of humane letters from her alma mater. She resides in New Jersey and is a proud wife of Anthony G and mother of Taylor and Jordan. After the students recommended Dr. G, I stalked her on social media, and I researched her deeply, and now I am a fan of my Shiro. Please welcome Dr. Michelle Thornton G. HT, I know you can welcome me better than that. Yeah! Because I saw y'all acting up when I walked in. Um, President Dr. Colette Pierce Burnett, look, she's earned every single one of those names, right? I got, you got to say her whole name. Uh, and I am now the author of three books. Look, I put work in. <laughs> you know, board of Trustees, um, alumni, esteemed faculty and guests, mama, daddy, I saw y'all with your t-shirts on, auntie, uncle, ooh, y'all folks up in here, let's go, I love it. Uh, and last but not least, um, the HT graduating class of 2019. I see you. I see you. Um, don't let all this fool you. I can get jiggy with it. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I just want to take this in a minute. I'm only going to take about 15 minutes of your time. I know you're trying to get to where you're going. I'm actually going to the quad this afternoon in my hills to see what's up. Um, but it's an honor uh, to stand here with you today because there is at one point in my life, I didn't think that I would even ever wear a cap and gown and I'm going to talk about that today. Uh, and I know there was some dismay that we weren't outside, but let me tell you something. When God moves you to his house, you thank him. Let me, let me just say it one more time. <laughs> when God makes it rain and moves you to his house, you thank him. Uh, so let me tell you how I started my morning uh, this morning. Like I do every morning, I got on my knees and I prayed to my Heavenly Father. I don't know who you pray to and I don't really care. Uh, but what I asked him is that I asked him that my words would fall on understanding ears and acceptance. They would guide and direct my words and that they would put the devil on notice that he has no dominion on the class of 20. 19, not today and not ever. Um, and we know when two or more people are gathered, what happens? Anything is possible. So listen, as any great leader does, I Google the best commencement speeches. You know how we do it, right? I, I love a little competition because I want it to be better than them. When they ask next year who was this year, y'all say it was Dr. G, I remember her. 
<laughs> so I Googled the 10 speeches. Denzel gave his message on put God first and Oprah on failure is part of your road to success. And Ellen DeGeneres, I love her. She said, you know I didn't graduate, right? Why y'all even have me here, okay? <laughs> Um, all multimillionaires, all recognizable, and then there's little old me, a girl from Oakland, California, okay, <laughs> who graduated in 1984, and, I, and, and as Dr. Burnett said, I didn't even go to college right away, because at 21, I met and started dating a professional athlete, and I'm going to keep it real honest in this room today, and, and this is for y'all, no judgment, because when we walk in honesty, we can get something done. And I dated that professional athlete until I was 26. And what I did is I invoked my will in my life. And when we do that, danger happens. Do you hear what I'm telling you? I decided that my calling in life was to be his wife. wife. So instead of being on the housewives duking it out, <laughs> I'm standing before you as an executive because I allowed his will to take over. I know y'all like the housewives show. Don't hate. Don't hate. So listen, when that relationship ended, I had to take care of myself financially, and I ended up cleaning up people's homes for a living and working at a hotel at the front desk. And there's nothing wrong with that. It just wasn't what God had for me for the long term. I was overweight, I was uneducated, and I did not love myself. Oh, and how God will humble you when you don't follow his word. So listen, when my dad was diagnosed with leukemia, I saw him fighting for his life and it actually changed my life and my trajectory. I realized that I was valuable, that my life had purpose, and I graduated at the age of 30 and shortly thereafter my father died and I made a promise to him and it was the last words that he heard that I would make him promise of me. So today, at this very moment, with the HT class of 2019, oh, my father is smiling down on me, y'all, okay? <clears throat> And listen, although this is my story, I'm sure some of y'all have sacrificed. There are people in this room that have sacrificed to watch your children, your spouses, your friends walk across the stage. And what I love about HT is the tagline, we are you. So I changed it a little bit uh, because mine today is, I am you. See, there might be one Oprah in here and maybe one Denzel, but I can tell you right now, there is everyone in this room who can be me and I'm not doing bad. Every single one of you can be me. Not really, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, so listen, I am honored to commence you into the next phase of your life with some simple truths that I've learned on this journey of being a black woman. Are y'all with me? You're going to hang in there? You're going to listen? Okay, so these are my truths. I got a few of them. There are a different set of rules for the folks in this room. I want you to hear what I'm telling you because I've been in corporate America for 30 years and there's still different rules for me. But what I've learned is as long as we know the truth, we can win. I walk with a lot of self-awareness. It is a fundamental tool that you will have to learn. I'm going to tell you something that happened 15 years ago when I was applying for a job that I really, really, really wanted. I had provided three references. You know how we do, right? You put the names down. You hope they call those names because you don't want them to call them other people because you don't know what they can say. So I talked to every single one of them and they agreed of the story. I even put it in writing. And so I got the job. A month later, my boss tells me, goes, Miss G, it was Thornton at the time, one of your references said not to hire you. And I was really shocked. And this was the lesson for me. And what my boss told me, he says, I wanted to tell you that because you need to have better people discernment. <laughs> better people discernment. And it was a lesson that I would never, ever, ever forget. See, I viewed our relationship through the service I had given him, not through the response to me. Him canceling meetings, him not responding to emails right away, not having access to him. You gotta view people how they treat you, not how you treat them. Truth number one, are you with me? Okay, amen, let's go. Truth number two, when people show you who they are, what do you do? Because they know themselves better than you. All right, let's go. I have many times shared personal information with people who had not yet earned the right to hear it. They hadn't earned the right to hear it. It's a natural thing to share information because you're excited and happy, but this is what happens. People love you and they unconsciously pray against you. Let me tell you what the prayer sounds like. I don't really want her to get that job out of town because we can't be as close. 
I don't want her to go on a diet because we can't hang out in the same way. If she's saved and sanctified, we can't go to the club together and they're putting energy into the universe unconsciously about you and your future and you empower them to do that. Save your information. I'm, I know someone's grandmother in there told them, don't tell everybody everything, baby. <laughs> because they don't have good intentions for you. Listen, I have an ongoing elimination list. When you show me who you are, you're going to make it to the list. And I'm not going to text you. I'm not going to call you. Because when you're really eliminated, I'm not going to give you any more energy that you don't deserve. And the last thing, don't let people make more withdrawals and they're going to make deposits because your bank account's going to be empty. You guys listening? You guys still with me? Okay, I only got a few more. Truth number three, your social media accounts are your resumes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because the first thing that I do when a candidate calls me, I go to their social media and I see what they're saying. Oh, you mean that private account? You mean the one that we can set up a false name and really follow and see what you're doing? You mean that one? You mean the one that we call the other interns and have them investigate you? Oh, that one that you don't think anybody knows about? Oh, yes, that one. And let me tell you what happened to a young lady that I was fighting for to hire in my company. They found out she had some, said something negative about the network. And it was something simple like, ooh, that show was so whack on that network. And legal called me and said that I could not hire her because she didn't have good sense to keep her mouth shut. I want you to remove every picture that you wouldn't bring on an interview. I want you to delete every friend that you already know in your gut is not appropriate to be on social media. Because you might get the job now, but where God is going to take you is going to be critical for you to manage the things that you say. Okay, I'm just letting y'all know. Now the other side of social media could be an amazing tool. Brand yourself, do something with it. Nobody can't tell you you can't be a film producer or content creator. That's what social media was created for. People can't tell me I can't write a book. I can, and I can push out information. I can be an entrepreneur and work in corporate America, and so can you, responsibly. All right, rule number four. The most influential people in the building answer the phones and wear uniforms. Oh, they don't have a CEO title. There's someone guarding that gate. Executive assistants, mailroom clerks, and janitorial staff are oftentimes the most informed and powerful people in the company. There have been multiple times that the cleaning people and mailroom clerks have shared information with me that was confidential yet vital because you know what happens? People walk by them every day and they're invisible to them. They're invisible to them. And let me tell you something, most of our ancestors wore uniforms just like that so that we could be here today. Do not walk by them. Do not ignore them. Make them your friends. Say hello to them. I'll never forget one of the clean ladies said, Miss G, yo, old girl in that office right there, 302, has some stuff in her trash. Watch your back, okay? In the trash. I was like, girl, you better watch out for me. And if people are rude to my executive assistant, oh, you'll never speak to me, ever. You will not get on my calendar. You will not get a meeting. All right, let's go. Truth number four. Y'all heard that one, right? Okay. You got to find an advocate or a champion. Matter of fact, don't leave this room until you have one. I didn't say mentor. Great, you can have a mentor. That's typical. That's great. That's amazing. It takes a long term to build a relationship. But sometimes all you need is someone to send an email on your behalf. We make it complicated. Right? Because if I email on your behalf, you're going to get a meeting. And it took me three minutes. Now, this is the rule. When I leave here today, please don't let me see in my LinkedIn account everybody's resumes and business cards and pictures. And you know, my auntie, send me something that I can use. Be memorable. Do some research on me. This is not a game. This is easy. You got to be smart when you're reaching out to people. You got to be able to build a relationship beyond a transaction. Because transaction means we're done after we say hello. I'm giving you guys some tricks that I have used to build relationships with people that are still meaningful today. I can absolutely tell you that I'm an EVP in the world's largest talent agency where you don't see many people like me. 
I can look okay, I'm kind of cute for 53. But you don't still see a lot of people like me. But my girl, Bozema St. John, made a call for me and said, we should hire her, and that's what went down. But because we had a relationship, because we shared information, because I'm sending her stuff that she needs, because I see she's traveling, so I sent her a care kit on the road. Okay, I know she has a lot of hair, I sent her a bonnet. Whatever it is, be smart, use your thing, get out of your phone just to, to follow other people that don't care about you. Use the tool to get ahead. There's a lot of competition out there. And did I mention that you have to do 200% to get 100% of the credit? Did I mention that part? I'm sorry, I forgot that part, don't forget that. Number six, culture each strategy. Do you know what the heck I'm talking about? Let me, let me just tell you, because this is for your generation, because there is a perception about you, millennials, that you walk with arrogance, you know everything, that you're on this trajectory, that you want things right away, you're the me too, right, right away movement. And a lot of that is actually not true. So know the culture of your environment by the very nature requires you to activate your curiosity. Curiosity allowed me to build a network for black women that didn't exist called BET Her, and my assistant created the logo. We did it in our corner. We did something amazing. We didn't get permission, we were curious. We knew that black women spent more money than everybody else, that they are on their phones 60 hours a week. How we do that and still get, I don't, maybe that's not true. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. But I did my research. I was curious about me. I'm my own focus group and I built something and you have the same ability. The culture sets the tone for how you dress, move, talk and flow in the company. When you walk in the door, you do not talk, you pay attention. When you get to your graduate school and class, you pay attention. What type of professor is it? What time of, what time of tone is he setting? So listen, I get this, this is the number one call I get from this generation and I hear it all the time. Guess what? I'm not understood and I cannot be myself. And guess what I tell them in my best Oakland voice? Oh, y'all can be yourselves, just not here. <laughs> and so guess what? You either compromise and adjust without giving up who you are or you find the right place where you can be yourself. We got options and choices, but you will not succeed if you don't fit into that culture, period. Period. You like that? Done. <laughs> Okay, I call this capacity. Number seven, capacity is just turning on your acting skills, okay? And I know all y'all are actors because I saw you jumping up, dancing, acting up, making faces, doing the thing, so come on now. This is what happens because when you show your anger because you're not getting what you want, there is an adjective that is placed against you that you will never shake in that environment. Because as soon as you're called an angry Hispanic or Asian or black woman or black man, they put you in a box that you cannot climb out of. You understand? You don't get mad. You pay attention. You build a plan to get out. You leave on your terms, not theirs. You don't let people determine when and where you go. You decide. It's your decision. I spent 12 years at three companies with the same exact job title, and I became sick of it. So instead of changing them, I changed myself, how I thought about it, getting things in writing, understanding what the rules are, and engage in that way. And then I got what I wanted. I started paying attention. All right, rule number eight. We're almost done. Y'all good? Okay. When you find yourself alone on an island, you take advantage of it. A lot of times I was so lonely and miserable and didn't want to be in a company because I was the only black woman in a room and I had to try so hard to make friends and be accepted and how are they dressing? And then I thought about it, I said, wait a minute, maybe God wants me to be alone because he wants me to do some things. Maybe he wants me to be alone because guess what? I'm the only voice at the table that can move this company forward. Maybe I have something that's impressive. So instead of being mad, I took advantage of it. Being alone on an island can sometimes be good. So let me tell you what they're saying about your generation, or let me tell you what their some stats are. 50% of the workforce by 2020 will be and look like this. So they gotta hire you, because it's, it's, it's changed. The world has changed. You're setting every trend, you're product talker, you are social media igniters, you're brand builders, you're content creators, and guess what? What you do today, the world does tomorrow. There is power in that, not arrogance, power. 
A lot of times you'll be the only one at the table and you don't speak, you don't take a seat at the table, you sit in the back and that's how you're treated. Understand that you are a focus and resource group. Oh, did I mention that every single advertiser in the world wants to reach you because you buy more products and services? Do you think there's a little power in that? When you walk into a door of a company, you better be heard, you better be seen, you better use your HT woo woo. <laughs> okay, truth number nine, two more. Don't wait in line if you don't have to. Is John Pope here? Is he in the room? Okay, you're in the room, stand up, sir. This gentleman sent me a note on LinkedIn and said, I want you to look out for my son. Where is his son? Okay, let me tell you what, let me just tell you what happened. John sent me a note on LinkedIn that his son was walking across the stage. So guess what I did? I looked him up, right? So he has me looking for his son when I'm walking in the door. Why y'all gonna wait in line when you don't have to? So guess what happens? When his son reaches out to me in the future, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna respond, right? When he needs a reference for his whatever he needs, I'm gonna respond. Y'all are so busy being cool and posting things and, and thinking about, you're not even thinking about using your tools. Now, if anybody knows me, they know I love to help people. I spend my life servicing people and my community. And all y'all had to do was reach out on LinkedIn. If you ever wanted to be connected to someone who works at the most powerful media company in the world. So John, you done opened up the door for your son and you gotta follow up and finish. Let's go. Last thing, last and most important thing, without faith and prayer, I would be nothing. I can say that confidently. I would be nothing. So two years ago, my executive assistant, I wrote this in this third book called Success on Your Terms, and I wrote this book because I was tired of trying to live up to other people's standards of success. So I'm a success because I give back to my community. I'm a success because my kids are straight A students. I'm a success for many reasons other than the title that I have at my job. Two years ago, my executive assistant gave me a book called The Circle Maker. I want you to remember that name and remember this name first though. Okay, The Circle Maker. <laughs> Um, and she wanted me to read it. And now this is an assistant. When I interviewed her, told me, she goes, Miss, Miss G, Miss Thornton, this was when I was at BET. Miss G, I can work for you, but you can't call me on a Sunday because that day is set aside for the Lord. So I was like, Whoa, wait, uh-oh. Oh, yeah, okay. One, she honest. Two, she's like, don't call me on a Sunday. I said, okay, I know she's going to be praying over me because I'm going to need it because I'm going to knock someone out if they come talking crazy to me. Um, and I didn't read it for six months. And when I finally picked up the book and read it, it literally changed my life. Because guess what I was praying for? Things that God had already equipped me with. I was praying to write a book and this and that and this and that. And God said, make your prayers audacious. Make them big enough that you will get my attention because I'm busy. And so I realized that I had not written down my goals and my dreams in a place that I could see them that were visible. And this is what happens. We're such a technology-driven society and generation that we type everything in our phones. And what happens is when you write something down, you build a relationship with it. You build a commitment to it. We got to get old school sometimes, y'all, and write things down where we can see them, where we can see them. And that's what I did. And I circled them. And I circled them again, and I circled them until they started to come true. And it literally changed my life that she did this for me. So listen, in closing, I'd like to leave you with some words from a famous poet, orator, that we lost way too soon. So Mr. Nipsey Hussle said this, you don't know how strong you are until being strong is your only choice. And you have the choice to do anything that you want to. Don't give it to anybody. Let's go HT 2019. Okay, so my black girl in me says, yeah. <laughs> Another round of applause for Michelle Thornton G. She, 
She said, as a people, what we do today, the world does tomorrow.